I'm Special Investigator Enfield, Homicide Division, and your host for this episode of Gangbusters. Our case is about Nick Bendero, a ruthless gang leader. The trail of their crimes across the countryside earned for him the title of The Phantom. In just a minute, I'll tell you about it. Most criminals follow a pattern in their jobs, and the Phantom was no exception. But in his case, this pattern worked for him. Three things were immediately outstanding about this gang. One, they were always masked. Two, their uncanny ability to suddenly appear, act, and disappear, leaving no trail. And three, they specialized only in payroll holdups. A typical case occurred on a mine road outside of Pittsburgh. This is a heck of a time for something like this to happen. Yeah. Can't figure out how that tire blew. You just put a whole new set on this car. So what difference does it make? Well, even if it is, and I hate to stop anywhere with a $30,000 payroll. Where are the tools? Back there in the back. Hey, wait a minute. Take a look at this. Look at that tire. What do you mean? That's no blowout. Look at that hole. What do you make of it? Looks like a bullet made it. Right, gentlemen. Now just hold it. Be careful. Don't move and you don't get hurt. My interest is in the $30,000. Okay, boys, dig out the load head or over and we'll be on our way. and they left no clues. We combed every inch of the surrounding country and found no trace. The only places we could not search were the hundreds of abandoned coal mines in the area. As we searched, the Phantom doubled his activities. Chief, why did you shoot that guy? Because you're a fool. You let that guard catch a glimpse of your face. But I couldn't see through them eye Nah. But I got no record. I look like a million other guys. I hope so, for your sake. In Detroit, they used a submachine gun to lift a $50,000 payroll, and two guards lost their lives. On Christmas Eve, the Phantom and his gang struck again. Before the echo of the shot that killed a guard had died away, they were gone with $23,000. Their timing was perfect. Their execution of plans was flawless and their knowledge of when to strike was uncanny. Special Investigator Enfield, an expert on this type of crime, was brought in from Detroit. And this is the only description you have of any of the gang? Blonde, close-cropped hair, medium size, medium height, ordinary face. This fits nearly anybody. I've remembered everything that happened, sir. I can't add anything more. I, I'm sorry. Well, thanks anyway for coming in. How can they know the exact date of the payroll shipments? Beats me, but they've never been wrong yet. Then our best chance is the series of dummy runs. You want some of my men to help? No. I'm a stranger, and if their tip comes from a local source, they'd spot your men. Okay. Now this is tomorrow's run. We're going through all the motions so it'll look real. We pick up bags at the bank, load them into the car, and follow this route. Departure from the bank is 9.35. I'll be there. Enfield rode the decoy deliveries for days, but the Phantom never rose to the bait. 
We even let a few small payrolls go through, hoping that he would strike. The Phantom seemed to sense what we were doing. Nothing? As usual. It's going to take the real thing, and a big one. And I think we've got it. You remember Joe Rollins, one of the Phantom's first victims? Of course. How are you, Joe? Fine, thanks. Joe's company has a big shipment going to Coverdale. But it's so big, they've hired an armored truck to make the haul. An armored truck? That's right, sir. They've over 100,000 ships. <whistles> Bill's driving, and he'll have Joe beside him, and two more in the body of the truck. But I feel we ought to have another car behind them, and heavily armed. And that's right, Chief. I'm a truck and not our man to the sky once before. I don't want it to happen again. And I agree. You tell me the time and place, and I'll have a car ready. Right. Chief, I'd like to try something. The Phantom always gets word of these things. So why don't we keep it among ourselves? You and I will follow that truck. In that way, only six people will know about this. And then if he strikes, we'll close in. And I'm a sitting duck? Right. Are you willing? Oh, I'm not exactly eager. But I'm willing. Joe, not a word of this outside this office. Chief, it'll be my neck sticking out there. So don't worry, huh? Well, it's time we get back to our work. You mean it's not those phony shipments? <laughs> Scrap paper won't buy the miners' bread. The real money has to go through, and this is a good haul. See, for half that amount, you'll sell your soul. What'd you find out in town? <laughs> the cover day pair of will be shipped tomorrow. Since we scared them off for a while, they, uh, they're behind, and this one will be big. Do we use the same system? No. I've come it like before. And it will again. One of the men was bragging about how they were going to outsmart the Phantom this trip. <laughs> they should know better than that. They should, but they don't. I take this as a personal insult and think we should teach them a lesson. What kind of trick do you think they're going for? It's no trick, Eric. They had themselves an armored truck. I'm a truck. I don't go to the state, man, boss. Neither am I. I think we ought to let this one go through until we can get... Boss, how much is big? Over a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. That'll be the biggest haul ever made. Hey, that's twenty-five grand a piece less any help that we pay. Whitey, you're a stupid man. Your arithmetic is as faulty as your judgment. Here. Read the story of the robbery on page two. I marked it for you. The cop I had to shoot because of you did not die. He was questioned by the police and has given an excellent description of you. But, Chief, that description fits a hundred other guys just as well as it does me. You missed the point. I don't get what you're driving at. The point is, my friend, when you disobeyed my orders, you placed us all in jeopardy. If curious citizens armed with false courage should begin organized raids into this area, we'd lose the best hideout in the entire state. But Chief, I don't understand. I'm not hot. With me, you're hot. If someone should recognize you and follow you, they could close three of the key openings in these tunnels, and we're trapped. But that's only maybe one chance in a hundred thousand. Exactly. One hundred thousand. Divided by three. You will not be with us. I want the rest of you to understand that I have a careful and methodical reason for everything I demand of you. If you want to exist, you must obey. Cease to obey and you cease to exist. Was that true about killing off the tunnels? If I thought of it, so can the police. And I do not underestimate them. Chief, I still think it's risky. If it's worth having, it's worth risking. Oh, an armored truck. <laughs> they won't even see us. Look, we've never handled anything as tough as this. And we've never been up against armor before. This is a personal challenge to me. <laughs> Buck up, Eric. There's a way to crack every naughty problem, including an armored truck. This is 
lousy. But he'll see us for sure. I want him to see us. The match, you don't they'll hide our identity. Keep your hands on the tools and leave the brain work to me. There'll be no masks. We won't need them. Oh, a smart setup. Nobody will be suspicious of a gang of road workers. What do we do? Dig a trench across the road? Yes. Right over there, two feet deep. The boss will give you the same choice he gave Whitey. Yeah, but this is my the wholesale. Every cop in the country will be looking for us. It'll take the cops a lot longer to find us than it would the Phantom. As the name implies, the Phantom was a mystery. The big secret, his means of obtaining tip-offs on shipments. The Phantom was shrewd. He figured the one road the payroll truck must take. The Phantom was calculating, marking off several sections of the road with dynamite. The Phantom was conscienceless. He did not care how he removed persons barring his way. Boys, today we make history. Joe, if they strike, it'll be by the outcropping of rock on the long grade. You'll be rolling your slowest at the point. When they hit, we stay buttoned up inside until the second car comes up behind us. Right. With them between us, we ought to bring it off. Good luck. Boss, there's two of them. Be quiet. We'd better forget. Shut up. There's enough for both. Are you sure? Of course. I planned it. It seemed possible the phantom scheming could be anticipated. There was only one road by which the money could be delivered. Careful study showed there was one location that might serve perfectly for the phantom. This was an outcropping of earth over the road, serving as good cover. The outcropping is just ahead. To reach the outcropping, a vehicle was slowed by a long grade. A curve made the approach even slower. Tension mounted, even as the vehicles labored up the grade, around the curve. Well, it's gonna happen now. It's the time. We did it. That's one payroll the Phantom will never get. I'll feel better when this trip is over. Shall I close the gap between us and the armored car? Might as well. felt the same relief that swept over his companions. But he knew they could not relax until the money was delivered or the Phantom captured. Enfield warned them to be careful. But what can you do to an armored car? Now we're as ready as we'll ever be. Just keep buttoned up when they hit you. We'll close with them as soon as possible. Yes, sir. the armored car and split it open like a ripe nut, the hand of Providence was cradling us. In spite of the violence and destruction, only one guard was killed. I saw him. I saw him. I saw the fan. Uh, easy, Joe. You're suffering from shock. I saw him. I know him anyway. 
Okay, he'll be all right. He's a square. I know him anywhere. I saw him. I saw the phantom. Again, they had disappeared, and the only place that could swallow them so completely and so consistently was the mine area. They're hiding somewhere within this area. There are hundreds of tunnels, thousands of entrances. <clears throat> It'd take a lifetime to scare them out. Unless we could make them come out of their own free will. Oh. I've got an idea. It's fantastic, but it may work. Actually, there was nothing fantastic about Enfield's idea. It was strongly based on a law of human nature. It was put into action. The idea called for kindling a small fire and fanning it into smoke signals. Now you understand this, Mrs. Benson. Oh, absolutely, Chief Merritt. You are going to put poison gas in the abandoned mine shaft in an attempt to capture the Phantom and his gang. Right. Naturally, a secret is of no value unless it's generously shared. Who is better equipped to hear a secret than a lonely woman? This one was told to not tell a soul. And if I can be in any help to you, don't forget to let me know. Thank you, ma'am. But if this works the way we think it will, you've done more than your share. With the natural talent some women have, the rumor was public knowledge within minutes. They wouldn't dare. Three of the camp. I've read it a dozen times. I still think it's preposterous. They wouldn't dare throw poison gas down here. It would be murder. The thought of being gassed in a hole in the ground was too much for the phantom. He was flushed into the open. The authority had watchers on the lookout for this rare and wanted bird. The watchers concentrated on isolated farm areas. Finally, one counted six persons staying where only three were known to live. The watcher reported his find. Authorities went out to investigate. The phantom, like most hunted animals and criminals, had an added sense, a radar warning him pursuers were near. Uneasily, he began preparations to escape capture. Leaving word for reinforcements to follow, the officers headed for the farm. Joe? Yes? If you see anyone resembling the Phantom, give us the nod. He's a square head. If I see him, I'll know him. An expert on the use of dynamite, the Phantom put his faith in it. It was noisy, but effective, making the user a one-man gang. The trap set, he covered his tracks. He did not want to make his prey suspicious. for the newspapers. My wife just finished waxing the floor. Excuse me, my not getting up. I, I'm a cripple. I'm Chief of Police Murren. This is Special Investigator Enfield and Joe Rollins. Delighted to meet you, gentlemen. We're making a routine investigation. How can I help you? 
We're not sure you can. I spotted the setup a second later. If this man became suspicious, he'd blow us to Kingdom Come as we left the house. If we attempted to rush him, he might blow himself and us to Kingdom Come. Our lives depended on how good Joe Rollins could act. Are you looking for somebody like me? I don't know. Are we, Joe? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Take a good look. I want you to be very sure. Is, uh, is this the man you told us about? No, sir. He doesn't look anything like him. Sorry we troubled you. Thank you for your cooperation. on a plunger. Uh, I saw the wires running under the door. That's a phantom. Enfield, you get around to the front. Now, when you're set, sing out. Deputize me. I own a few things. You stay here and cover the back. you inside there it's your choice come out with your hands up stay in there until we run you out with tear gas or blow yourself up you've got 10 seconds until we fire the tear bomb identify this man, Joe? That's the man aboard saluting you the armed car. He's a phantom. Wrong, Joe. He was the phantom. Other witnesses identified our suspect and, faced with overwhelming evidence, he identified himself as Nick Bendero. He was found guilty of first-degree murder in the slaying of the armored car guard and was sentenced to die in the electric chair. Bendero made a sensational escape. But one year later, he was shot and captured by the Cleveland police. He died in the electric chair on January 21st. Now Gangbusters presents a clue to a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention, attention to all citizens and police. And now, Gangbusters nationwide clue to assist the police in their war against the underworld. Wanted, Ralph Joseph Grubasich, nickname Gruby Grubasich. Age 29, weight 150 pounds, height five feet, seven and a quarter inches, black hair, brown eyes, nationality, Canadian. Grubasich has worn eyeglasses on occasion. Warning, this man may be armed. He is a known drug addict and is to be considered dangerous. We repeat, Grubasich is a user of narcotics and may be armed. If you have any information concerning Ralph Joseph Grubasich, please notify the police department, Buffalo, New York, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. If you have any information concerning this clue, please notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Next week, another case taken from the official police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join Gangbusters. Gang
Brain Busters, created by Phillips H. Lord. The case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.